So I was watching Sing, thinking I might find something to theorize on, and I guess I kind of did. If you aren't current, why are you watching a Sing theory? It's about a dying Broadway-style theater and its owner, Buster Moon, desperately trying to turn things around by making a more lively show out of a singing competition. Now, a theory didn't jump out at me right away, but I couldn't help but feel compelled towards the cutie little koala Buster Moon. When I saw the state of the Moon Theater and heard about Mr. Moon's financial crisis, I immediately started listing all the ways he could improve the theater. Like, hey, try to register yourself as a 501c3 nonprofit, and then any business who donates things to you, like set supplies or paint, can write it off on their taxes. Don't you say that this is a movie about animals and I'm overthinking it. I am already well aware of that. But if this animal-filled world has our world's music, then I'm going to insist that this is an alternate universe where people are just animals and thereby the IRS still exists. If they can still have bank repossessions, then someone in the animal kingdom is tracking Moon's taxes too. I refuse to accept otherwise. But certainly, trying to alter a few things to make it a nonprofit organization over a business would be very helpful to the financial state of the theater. I mean, nonprofit only means that you aren't looking to make a huge sum of money, you're more investing back in your community. And isn't that what Moon is really doing anyways? So why not be a 501c3? One of the things that could help make a nonprofit status happen is children's theater. And really, why not have children's theater a few times a year? According to the posters in Moon's office, he's not really done anything but sort of highbrow art. Children's theater usually doesn't offer the best sets or performances, but that's not the point. The point is that little kids always tend to fill seats with their parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, etc. So there's a profit to be had there. Even if you don't want to count that towards being a 501c3, that's still a way to generate revenue. Also, start a volunteer program to get more help. Are you telling me that the town is big enough to have thousands of animals auditioning for a singing contest, yet so small that there are no retired citizens who would like to help out and enjoy the theater from behind the scenes? Or look up the local college, make some phone calls, and get some theater majors and business majors to be interns. Because, again, the flyers didn't get sent around the world, they stayed local. So Sing takes place in a big city, and that likely means a college or two is somewhere in town. And, oh my stars, Mrs. Crawley would have to go off the payroll if I own that place. Honestly, the only reason I can think of as to why Moon keeps Mrs. Crowley around is because Moon can forget to pay her and she won't notice. Well, that or the possibility that he has tried to fire Mrs. Crawley and she forgets and comes back to work anyways. What's interesting though is that Mrs. Crawley seems to be a perfect representation for the Moon Theater's broken down state of existence. I could try to go further into that analysis, but I'm kind of obsessed with fixing up the theater first. For some reason this is more entertaining to me. Okay, so the singing competition. Buster Moon missed a lot of steps to get the most out of it. One performance might pack the house for one night, but from what we see in the movie, that isn't going to solve Mr. Moon's money problem. After all, when there's a grand prize for winning the competition, you can't exactly repeat that show every night and twice on Sundays. And there's like, what, two, three hundred seats in that theater at best? So Moon is really shooting himself in the foot here. What Moon needed to do was rip off American Idol, let tons of people into the show, eliminate a few each night, and then at the end of it all, have the crazy big finale performance with the giant sets. That is if, and only if, the budget allows. That method would get a lot more hype about the show, get people more invested in supporting their favorite singer, and sell a lot more tickets over the course of several months. It would be more of a cheap gimmick. 
and not the grand theatrical spectacular that Buster Moon was aiming for, but a tactic like I suggested would have yielded a lot more revenue for the Moon Theater. Normally, I would also comment on the extreme expense that Mr. Moon put into the sets, but as we're shown, he finds some, let's call it creative ways to be frugal. Um, not sure all those ways are legal, <coughs> water supply, <coughs> but hey, I guess it's only illegal if you get caught. No, no, I have a lot of young viewers and that is not a good message to put out. Well, huh, if it's public water, technically Moon's part of the public, isn't he? So I guess it's really his water to begin with? Jeez, no, that's better call saw logic right there. It was bad, okay? Let's just call a spade a spade. Do not steal from your local water supply. Buster Moon is not a role model. Let's just move on from that part for now. Unfortunately, all too often, creative types can't reconcile with business-minded decisions. They have a dream, and they can't see reality to figure out if the dream is feasible. And that can be beautiful, and that mindset can work out for some. But, more often than not, it leads to money troubles like Moon had. I also really hated that Singh implies that the only way for creative types to get by is to essentially mooch off of others. Moon relies on his friend's parents to fund his unprofitable shows, and Moon chooses those shows because they're a passion project that he believes in. But because the backers keep giving him money, and his own father works so hard to just hand his son the theater, Moon doesn't know how to properly value anything. So he doesn't choose to put on shows that will sell tickets, he puts on shows that he personally finds worthy. Now, did you notice how fast Moon's artistic integrity flew out the window when his financial backers abandoned him? His motive for creating the singing contest should have been his motives from the day he put Moon Theater on that building. You make money, you sell tickets, you keep the sponsors happy, and then when you have a solid reputation, that's when you introduce the artsy-fartsy stuff to the community because they already trust you at that point. Even at the end of the film, Mr. Moon is completely broke and it takes the resources of the incredibly rich Nana Noodleman to rebuild the theater. If Moon is put in charge of that place again, I guarantee you he will run it back into the dirt. He knows nothing about business management. He doesn't even seem to have any background working in something like community theater. All Moon knows is that he likes the grandeur of the stage. He's basically just a theater groupie who got in over his head. I mean, Mr. Moon's career would be like me saying, I like cats, so I'm gonna go open a pet store without a stitch of effort or research. Give me money, Dad. Give me money, best friend. Even though Buster Moon is a cute character and I love his optimism, he is the exact type of owner that grinds small businesses into the ground. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to like, subscribe, and share this video. I've also got a lot of other videos on my channel that you are fully encouraged to go check out. Plus, you can find me on Facebook at Say Halo Goodbye, which is my gamer tag, or Twitter at the underscore family.